I want to move on to some perhaps slightly controversial issues, um, some fallacies, some things which um, I think are sources of, of some misunderstanding and, and some confusion. The first one um, is um, a remarkably widespread kind of attitude, obviously, in the industry, um, where people essentially don't see the point of a coding standard because they, they trust their compiler. Um, our compiler is very good. We just enable all the warnings, and um, it finds lots of good stuff for us. Um, and um, as long as we don't see too many bugs, we're quite happy with it. So what's the point of a coding standard? Um, I think we've had quite a bit of explanation about that um, already. Um, the thing about compilers is that they, they are required by the, the language standard to detect errors. Um, Rand has already been into this today. Um, but just to expand it a little bit more, the, there are various types of error in the, in the C language. There's, there's syntax errors, which is where you have um, something that is completely meaningless. So in that top example, we have a curly bracket instead of a square bracket. So the code is meaningless. That's a syntax error. A constraint error is where you do something which the language doesn't allow. So assigning an integer value to a pointer is a constraint error. We sort of know what we think we want it to do, but actually it's not allowed in the language. You have to put a cast in if you want to assign a value to a, 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 a pointer. There's also this stuff called undefined behavior, which we've already talked about this afternoon. And undefined behavior is the stuff which the language simply says anything could happen here. It's the stuff which says if you have an array index out of bounds, goodness knows what's going to happen. It's a vulnerability in the language against which there's no protection. And the main problem with undefined behavior is that it's not always detectable. Um, it may only, you can't detect, you can't always find undefined behavior simply by looking in a single translation unit. Uh, you can't always find it by static means. Um, and that's, that's one of the big problems with undefined behavior. Um, compilers, as we know, are required to identify syntax and constraint errors, but they're not required to identify undefined behavior. And, um, and largely they won't, um, which, is, which is obviously where other tools come in. Um, the, the, the thing about undefined behavior, of course, is that um, it is very much an error. It's very much a fault, just as, as Randy has said. Um, as a syntax or a constraint error. It's just a fault which cannot, um, um, which isn't particularly defined in the language. It's a gap. And a compiler cannot guarantee to, to identify it. Um, nor can a static analysis tool, however good the static analysis tool. Sometimes undefined behavior can be detected. Um, but not always. And the whole point about a coding standard is, is that it reduces the risk of, of undefined behavior. That, that is one of the big roles of a coding standard, um, not to describe undefined behavior, but to protect you against it. So we have the semicolon problem. Yes, we've had it before this afternoon. and. Uh, um, we, we, we know the problem. The thing is that a semicolon, um, a, a null statement like that, um, in that context, is actually harmless. Um, <coughs> the problem in that statement is that it's disastrous. 
Um, so as Randy has, has, has pointed out, um, we have a situation here where a semicolon, a, a, a null statement, is not, um, is not a fault per se. It's a potential fault, uh, depending on the context. And it is in this context that a coding standard comes in. Um, you can't unequivocally say that a null statement is, is a problem. MISRA, unfortunately, um, uh, I say this with regret, um, went to enormous lengths to try and define a rule um, to uh, um, alleviate this problem. And they produced this rule 14.3. I say they, I, I have to accept a share of responsibility being a member of the committee, but I don't think this was MISRA's finest hour. Um, and so they produced a complicated rule before pre-processing a null statement shall only occur on a line by itself it may be followed by a comment provided that the first character following the null statement is a white space character have you got that um, it, it's not in my opinion a very good coding rule um, it's also completely unnecessary um, if you follow the coding rule 14.8 which requires that you use curly brackets in control statements in an if, a switch, a while, a do, all these things. Um, actually that 14.8, I think there's 14.9 which covers the if statement as well. So, But essentially that rule on the left, 14.3 in my opinion is actually quite redundant, <laughs> um, which is a bit sad. So Actually defining good coding rules is, um, um, is more difficult than it appears sometimes. <laughs>